need to take several things into account. We know that the nuclear reactions involve one, two, four, and six deuterons that add to a variety of nuclei. The nuclear reactions involve both hydrogen and deuterium, but of course these result in different nuclear products. The nuclear reactions occur only in special solid environments, which I call the nuclear active environment, the NAE. The nuclear reactions produce little if any radiation or energetic particles that are detected outside of the apparatus. However, if the right detectors are used, these radiations can be discovered inside the apparatus. Significant radiation is detected inside along with the nuclear, other nuclear products. The nuclear reactions can occur at rates that make significant heat energy. Of course, they can occur at lower rates where heat energy cannot be detected. Nevertheless, uh, the nuclear reactions can be uh, seen at these levels. And the nuclear reactions can be initiated many different ways. It's been quite a challenge to try to explain these behaviors. At least 500 papers have been published containing various theories and variations thereof. So, and it would not be practical to examine each one. Most are either inadequate, wrong, or not very useful. I would like to list those uh, things that I think uh, a, a theory should address. Hopefully, uh, this will help in the future. The nuclear charge of the deuteron or proton must be lowered, but not by neutron formation. Neutrons produce nuclear products that are generally radioactive, and, that are, and these are not seen, and they also produce radiation, which is not seen. The deuterons must form a cluster of two, four, or six deuterons after this lowering process has occurred. Even the fusion reaction, making helium, is thought to, re to result from four deuterons getting together to make uh, beryllium-8, and then this decomposes into two alpha particles, thus eliminating the need for the uh, gamma radiation. The reactions must produce very little gamma radiations and few radioactive products. The process must occur spontaneously without significant energy being applied. It happens uh, at room temperature uh, without any effort once the uh, nuclear reactive environment has formed, but it is helped by the addition of more energy, either as um, greater heat or energy in bombardment or laser light. The mechanism must occur only under very special conditions in unique solids. Otherwise, it would not be so difficult to reproduce. Well, I would like to suggest several general conclusions. The LENR phenomena is real and has the potential to be an ideal energy source. Significant energy can be produced using several methods with simple devices, such that heat that's generated could be available in individual homes. The effect requires use of a special solid material, the nuclear active environment, which needs to be identified and manufactured in large amounts. Well, I've only been able to tell you a small fraction of what is known about cold fusion. If you have other questions or are interested in pursuing the subject further, I invite you to look at these two sources of, of uh, information.